Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Amen. I hope so. You see, when, when Jesus comes again, he will fulfill your priority. When he comes in his glory and his, all the angels of heaven, and he comes to this earth for the second time which we are waiting for, and by looking at the signs and looking at the current events, whether they're political or religious, we know it is soon. Amen. When he comes very, very soon, your priorities that you have chosen day after day, he will fulfill. And when he comes, you will have it your way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your holy day. And just how you have sanctified and blessed this day, I ask that you sanctify and bless these people. They are your people. And have your Holy Spirit penetrate every single heart. And I ask that you rebuke the devil and his angels to distract anyone from listening to your message. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now this morning we're going to take a look at priorities. It, it, to, to this morning's message is setting your priorities. Setting your priorities. Priorities. We're going to take a look at priorities and more specifically, or, or, or more specific, God's priorities for humans. God's priorities for you. God's priorities for you and how those priorities affect your salvation or your damnation. We're going to take a look at God's priorities for us and how those priorities affect us. Most of us, if not every single one of us, have been taught priorities since we were toddlers. Sometimes some of those priorities have been verbally taught. Day after day after day after day, your mother or father told you something that they wanted it to become a priority in your life. An example of that, that comes to my mind, or, or that came to my mind when I was preparing this, uh, is my father-in-law. My father-in-law, he has many priorities, but one of them that he would just repeat and repeat and repeat to his children was you always greet people when you pass by. Whether you're coming in or, 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 or out, you always greet them. Good morning, good evening, hello. You don't just pass by somebody and just don't say anything. No, 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 no. be polite, say hi. How's it going? Good morning. And so, and so my wife tells me that, that sometimes they would come into church and they would just, you know, skip, forgetting, you know, saying hi to the greeter. And my father-in-law would say, you need to go back and say hi to that person. And so there she goes, you know, good morning, happy Sabbath. <laughs> and, so, and so it has become a habit to be polite. And, and it is a good priority, a good habit to, to be, to, to say hello to people. Um, even though you may not know them, sometimes, you know, you're going to the store and you're coming in. Some, some people will say, you know, will greet you. Good morning. You may never have seen them, but they just greet you. Or sometimes we are taught priorities not by verbal, but by example. We see our parents do something over and over that their priority without us even trying becomes our priority as well in our lives. And one that both my wife and I share is that, that I grew up and my mother never told me or even after I got married or my sister got married, she never said, remember this priority. No, it was just embedded that that's how we grew up and in my wife in the same way. And that was that you never left the house without eating breakfast. Now some of you may think, oh, that's no big deal. Well, it was a big deal in my home. In my home, it was a very big deal. Now she never 
said it, you know, uh, uh, don't forget, no, no. Even though we were running late trying to get in our shirts, he would say, sit down, your breakfast is ready. Oh, but I need to leave in, leave in five minutes. Well, you better eat fast. <laughs> but we had to leave, we could not leave the house without eating breakfast. That was just, you know, even up to this day, if I go visit and uh, I know that my mother will be up or my father and, and they'll be preparing for breakfast. And even if you want to go out, where are you going? You, your breakfast is waiting for you right there. <laughs> and, and, and I have, I have a brother-in-law that whenever we, whenever we go visit him in San Antonio, uh, since he, was, he grew up in the same way, you know, we wake up and even though we're all there with family, he, and, and he notices that no one is preparing breakfast, he'll say out loud, I don't hear any pots and pans. <laughs> you know, giving the hand like, hey, where's the breakfast? Where's the breakfast? So we, all of us, in one way or another, have been taught priorities. What is important? What, what are the priorities that maybe you have been taught by your parents or your, or your grandparents? But the problem, friends, comes when our priorities our priorities are not God's priorities. There, there's nothing wrong with having priorities. We should have priorities. But when those priorities don't line up with God's priorities, then we're in trouble. Then you are in serious salvation trouble. You see, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I invite you to turn there. Priorities are so important to God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 Verses 6, Prior priorities are so important that the Bible gives us instruction. There in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, here the Bible says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. This is where, where some of us have to make a mistake. Or I shouldn't say mistake, lack. We should teach it to them diligently. We need to study what that word diligently means. Amen. Diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. When you, you shall bind them as a sign on your hands, and they shall be as frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on your doorpost of your house, and on your gates. Here Moses is telling the people, don't assume, don't assume that your kids will choose God as their priority. God is telling Moses, Moses is, is telling the people and is telling us, don't assume that the little ones are going to love Jesus all the time and they're going to remember the songs they learned in cradle roll for the rest of their lives and follow Jesus and just walk right into the church. Don't assume that. You need to every day, every day when you get up, when you lay down on your doorpost, every day, teach them diligently about God. Make it a priority, God is saying. Make it a, a priority. We cannot assume that children will make that priority. Because knowing what's important doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come naturally knowing what's important. And the battle is that sometimes some of us, even as adults, don't know what is important still. We still don't know what's important. When someone leaves the church or they leave a church office, it is a testimony that they don't know what is important. So I want to share with you, we're going to look at God's priorities. We're going to look at some of, of God's priorities in the Bible. But I want to share with you God's top, what, what I think are God's top three priorities. In Genesis chapter 1 is, is the first one. Genesis chapter 1. God's top three priorities for you and for me. For all of the human race. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Are we there? The Bible says, Then God said, 
let us make man in our image according to our what? To our likeness. God's number one priority is that you be like God. According to our image and just like us. God's number one priority, I believe, is for us to be like him. You see, God isn't interested when, when we say, you know, or you, have, or, or you have heard, like father, like what? Son. Like son. And, and if I've heard it once, I've heard it many times where, well, you know, I'm just like my mother. I got the same character as my father. And, well, I can't help it. God, I'm sorry, that don't fly with God. God wants you to be like him. Not like your mama or your daddy. But to be like him. His priority is that we be like him. His second priority there in Genesis 2, verse 17. Genesis 2, 17. He's telling Adam and Eve, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. God's second priority for humans, for us, is that they be obedient and loyal to him. They be obedient and loyal to him. And the third one that I want, to, uh, I want us to see there is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis 3, 15. We all know this of the promise. There are two promises here. Genesis 3.15. Here God is talking to the serpent. And he says, And I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Here after the fall of sin, God is promising there will be a Savior coming that will bruise your head. It's going to wipe away sin. Thank God for that promise of salvation. And the other promise is that I will put en enmity between you and the woman. God has put enmity between us and sin. For us to dislike sin, to feel uncomfortable. God wants us, God, part of God's priorities is that we recognize that we can deal with this sin issue alone. That we need him. We need him to put enmity. We need that plan of salvation in our lives. We cannot deal with sin. We cannot, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot crush the head of Satan. We, not, we can't do any of that. We need him. And so God's, God's top three priorities that I think are to be like God, to be loyal to God, be obedient to him, and to recognize that you need God. Recognize that you need God. Is that, are those your priorities? Are those your priorities? That may not be your priority, but those are the priorities God has for you and me. What decisions did you make this week that made you more like God? Or what decisions did you make this week that led you to be Faithful, loyal, obedient. Or what decisions did you make this week that demonstrated that you needed God? That you needed God. If we go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, we're going to see more priorities that God has for us. And tell me if you just don't love God's priorities. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Here God is telling Abram, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. God's priorities is that his people be great. Amen. Amen. Are we awake? God doesn't want you, you know, to be a loser. He wants us to be great. A great nation, a great blessing. I will bless you and make you a great nation. And, and, and make your name great and you shall be a blessing I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you in all, and in all the, fam the families of the earth shall be blessed God wants us to be great praise the Lord 
How about Deuteronomy 28? Go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. We're going to see there. I, li I really like this one, especially the way it's worded. Verse 13. Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. God is telling here, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath, and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today, and are careful to observe them. God wants us to be the head and not the tail. Seventh-day Adventists of all most Christian denominations in general should be the head. If anyone should know the Bible more, it should be us. If anyone should be more of a Christian example, it should be us. If anyone should show more of God's mercy, it should be us. God wants us to be the head, a light to the world, not the tail they're dragging along. He wants us to be the head. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, if you just turn to the chapter before, 26, verse 1 and 2. So far, are we, are we lacking God's priorities? Yes. Hold on. 26, verse 1 and 2 says, And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving to you, and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chose to make his name abide. Here God's priority is to give him the first fruits. The first thing. First thing. The rest of this chapter talks about first fruits and tithe. And God's priority is for us to give him the first of everything. First of everything. Even before you cash your check or you deposit it, you are already taking care of his, of his tithe. Matthew chapter 5, let's look at some priorities in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. And then let's see if we still like God's priorities. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, the Bible says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way first. Notice, first. He's making a, pri a priority. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. And then come and offer your gift. God's priority is that we be at peace and reconciled with every single one. Every single one. As, you, as you're driving to church and you remember that, oh man, I, I hope so and so is not there this Sabbath. God is saying, you need to make a U-turn and take care of that first. Take care of that first. You see, God switches the priorities. Notice what it says. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember, who remembers that there's a problem? The one who did the offense or you? You. Not necessarily the other person. But they re remember that your brother has something against you. Then you go and fix it. You go and try to fix it. Now, for most of us, I know it's easy, or we rather say, you know, well, they did the offense. They need to apologize to me and not just wait when they do. But God switches the priority. If you remember, then you go and try to reconcile that. You go. God switches the priorities. Forget how you and I feel. God wants us to be reconciled and at peace 
with every single one. Friends, it is, it is not possible. It's, I just, it is not possible on how we can be part of the body of Christ. On how we can be part of the body of Christ and come to church and walk by somebody who we have something against and just not talk to them. That's just not possible. You plan to make it to heaven and do the same thing? That is not going to happen. Thank God, thank the Lord Jesus, he did not take the attitude when he came to earth. You and I wouldn't even be saved if that was the case. So now, are we still lacking God's priorities? Amen. <laughs> the amen got a little bit dimmer. <laughs> Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Some of us are just trying to, to collect more material things. But how much time are we spending instead of collecting material riches, heavenly riches? Heavenly riches. We, we go to work for eight hours a day and maybe even more than eight hours a day if you have a job that gets you time and a half overtime, great, take advantage of it. But what if God were to ask you eight hours a day with Him? Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with, with working for the money. Yes, God doesn't support bums that don't work. God wants us, just as much as you spend your time in worrying about your work and possessions, worry more about laying out for yourself treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven. What, is, what does he say about the treasures here on earth? They will rust and be destroyed. So no matter how beautiful the house is, how beautiful the ranch is, how beautiful the Cadillac may be, or the lack, whatever it may be, you fill in the blank. It's all going to rust and just pff, turn to nothing when Christ comes. But the treasure, that, the, the treasure that you have laid up in heaven will not be taken away. That will not be taken away. Matthew 10, 28, there, just turning a couple of chapters. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And I'm really, I'm really surprised by this one. I'm really, because I see this one a lot. Matthew chapter 28, no, I'm sorry, 10, verse 28. Here Jesus says in chapter 10, verse 28, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and the body in hell. Here Jesus is saying, don't, don't fear men who can just destroy your body. Fear God who can destroy both your body and your soul, both you eternally. We sometimes fear the wrong person. We were, we were in Fort Worth one time and we were putting gas there at a Tiger Mart and my wife went in to go pay and um, she gets in line and right in front of her is, is a church member. But thank, well, don't worry, nobody from this church. It's a church member that we know with, with you know, a six pack of beer. And he's, you know, he's just happily paying his alcohol and turns around to leave. And my wife just smiled as she was educated and priority to greet. Good afternoon, brother, how are you? Without saying, without saying anything else, the man just began to stumble. Oh, but, but, uh, uh, hi, Mr. Charles. You know, this isn't for me. You know, we have family coming over, and, and uh, you know, he, uh, he got stuck. He started talking how I talk. <laughs> started to, to stutter. Instead of fearing my wife, who cannot take away your soul, we need to fear God. God, friends. 
When I was when I was when I was younger and we were visiting our family in Houston, the first elder or one of the elders gave my uh, myself and my and my grandfather a ride to the church and then back to the apartments and on our way back I get inside the car and uh, the pastor is there and my grandfather is is going to come and be seated and he knows that my grandfather uh, was a pastor but then he starts cleaning the car and he starts putting away the scratch off lotteries and the fill in lotteries and he says oh your, your grandfather's going to come here right so he starts putting that stuff away and hiding it <laughs> friends we're fearing the wrong person. My grandfather cannot condemn this man to hell. No. I mean, he can take it to the board and rightfully, you know, discipline him through the church order, yes. Rightfully, that needs to be done. But he cannot keep, take him out of the kingdom. The only one who can do that is God. And here, God is saying, don't fear men. You're fearing the wrong person. You need to fear God. You know, that alcohol, those lottery tickets, way, you should have been worried way before a person saw it. When it began to creep in your mind, you should have re remembered, oh, God is looking. God is writing this down. The angel is recording that I'm getting this. That's what we should fear. Not when you see me or somebody else in the church and you get a little nervous. Revelation 12:17. God's priority is that his people there are identified and the dragon was enraged with the woman with the, and went to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the Ten Commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God's priority for his people is that they be obedient in keeping God's commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. How much do you still like God's priorities? Friends, God's priorities will take you to God's house. Now, before we look at our last priority, how many of us like to go shopping? Let me ask that again. Everybody was, was, was honest on this side. <laughs> how many of us like to go shopping? I mean, don't be pious. We all like to go buy stuff. We all like to go buy stuff. And sometimes, you know, we say, you know, we're going to go shopping. We may go to the malls. But if you came out with nothing, you didn't go shopping. You want to go look. But shopping is, you know, when you go and you buy something and you feel good that you bought something and you try it on and you like, you know. We all like to go shopping. But let me tell you one thing that there's going to come a day, very soon, that if your priorities are not God's priorities, you won't be able to buy. If your priorities are not God's priorities, you won't be able to buy or even sell. According to Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17. Revelation 13, 16 and 17. I'm not going to discuss about these two beast powers. But there is a beast power here that he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except those who have the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Most of us, if not all of us, didn't get through this week without buying something. Without buying something. If you didn't buy anything, I mean, you, you bought gas. You see, the, the, the devil knows that he cannot overcome most Adventists with alcohol or tobacco or gambling. He knows that we hold on to our principles. Amen? amen? I hope, amen. amen. Yes, he does. He knows that most Adventists won't fall for those things. So what does he do in the last days? Satan will overcome most people with things that they'll have to buy. Things that they like to buy. 
And he will say, in the last days, what I'll do, instead of, instead of tempting them with alcohol or tobacco or pornography or gambling or the clubs, instead of tempting them with that, I'll take away their ability to buy stuff. Their ability to buy stuff. And most of us, or some of us, are tied with financial responsibilities. We have mortgages, we have rents, we have car payments, we have credit card payments, which is like to buy things. We like to buy things. We like material things. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying, friends. We need to buy things. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with owning a nice house, owning a nice, dependable car. That is not what my point. My point is that is not God's priority. Amen. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You can buy your car, you can buy your house, you can buy your clothes, but seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. God knows that you need these things. God knows you need food to pay your electricity. He knows that you need those things. But more than that, he knows that you need him. Because when the time comes when you are not able to buy, what are you going to depend on? I hope it's God. Amen. I hope it is God. And you won't be looking for, for money you put under the mattress, maybe. <coughs> Even if you have money under the mattress, it's not going to do you any good. It says you cannot buy or sell. You're stuck. And if you really think about it, it's pretty scary if you cannot buy anything. I mean, if you really, really thought about it. During the Thanksgiving week, my debit card didn't work. Apparently, I used it somewhere where there was some kind of problem with it, and the bank just, boom, canceled it and sent me a new one. I didn't know that had happened. But then when I go and try using it somewhere else, I'm sorry, the card's declined. I know the money is there. So, okay, so I use my wife's debit card, and sure, it works. But then I find myself somewhere else, trying to, I don't know what it was, to get. And it just didn't work. You know, for just a couple of days, maybe it was three or four, until I went to the bank after the Thanksgiving holidays, and asked them, what's going on with my car? And they explained to me. But during those days, I felt, hmm, more than handicapped. I don't know what to e express it. That I couldn't buy anything. Not even a piece of chewing gum. <laughs> Friends, there will come a time where God will allow Satan to take away all of our goodies, all of our stuff, and leave us bare. Then we will see, and he will see, what our priorities have been all along. When Revelation 13, 17 is fulfilled, that is a time when God will divide those who have accepted his priorities and those who have accepted their own priorities. In that moment, the buyers and the sellers will be identified as the devil's people. And the people without the basics will be identified as God's people. You see, there's going to be two groups of people. Two groups of people. Don't miss this. There will be one group who will be on their knees looking up to heaven and saying, God, thy will be done. Yes. In my life, let your will be done in my life. Amen. And you surrender it all to God. And there will be the other people that God from his throne will look down and he's going to say, thy will be done. And that, that, that's, that's what you want? Then let your will be done. Then let your will be done. God will accept your priorities. Whatever you put first today. You don't want to be like God, God says, I accept that. You don't want to think like me, God says. You don't have to, I accept that. You don't want to be where I am, that will be done. I accept that. Great Controversy, page 543, tells us, the destiny of the wicked is fixed by their own choice. The destiny of the wicked is fixed by their own choice. 
their exclusion from heaven is voluntary with themselves and just and mercy on the part of God. God is so loving because God is love. God loves you so much he wants you to be with him but if you don't want to be with him God will say I love you and I respect that then I'll let you be where you want to be. God will take our priorities friends and fulfill them and fulfill it. Deuteronomy chapter 30 Deuteronomy chapter 30 Friends I I was saving this maybe for New Year's as we begin the New Year's, but I thought, you know, there is no better time to accept God and fix our priorities than now. Than now. And every, every sermon I prepare, I think this could be my last sermon that I give to myself or to you. I don't know. An accident can happen, I can get sick. We don't know. This could be your last one. And every single one, I want you to have the opportunity every single Sabbath to give and surrender your heart to God. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Amen. Friends, I present to you those two same choices, life and death, heaven or hell, eternal salvation or eternal damnation. But thank God Moses, M Moses even helps them. Choose life. Choose life. In case you need a little bit of help, church, choose God. Amen. Choose life. Joshua, chapter 24. I appeal to every single person here, member, visitor, to choose, the, choose Christ. Choose Christ. Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether it's the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whom lands you dwell. Here Joshua is saying, make up your mind. Choose. Get off the fence. If, you wanna, if your priorities are the world or the gods out there, Go on. Go on out there then. But here he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. As for me and the Cleveland church, we will serve the Lord here. Amen. And I hope and pray, as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. And that your priorities will be to serve the Lord. Making it a priority. Here Joshua is saying, choose who you will serve. Make it a priority. And my last verse for this morning is in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 3. It's right after Daniel. Well, not, not after. After Hosea and then Daniel. I'm sorry. Daniel, Hosea. Joel, Joel chapter 3, verse 14. We cannot scratch our heads forever, friends. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Ain't that a fact? Some people come to church, but yet they don't make a decision. They don't make a decision. Multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. 
Friends, we cannot scratch our heads forever and wonder what we're going to choose, what our priorities will be. My desire and my prayer is that your priorities are like Joshua's. Amen. For me and my house, I'm not, in, I'm not interested about my neighbors. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. For me and my family, me and my wife, me and my children, we will serve the Lord. We are going to serve God. I remember several times when I had friends coming over to the house. And some friends weren't Christians. But in my house, my mother said, in my house, we don't bring that movie. We serve the Lord here. And of course, as a child, you get nervous. And mom, why you got to be so mean? But she made her and my father a stand. We are going to serve the Lord here. You want to go watch that jungle, watch it somewhere else. Make the priority of God in your life, friends. I want to make a short and simple appeal. And I want to appeal for those who have put off making Christ their priorities. Now, as I have done in the past, haven't done it for a while, I ask for those to come want to surrender their life to God. But today I want to even make it more simple for you. More simple. I ask God to, to help me and extend the door of salvation every Sabbath, friends. If you want to make God your priority, you want to surrender your life to Christ, and you have not done it, and you keep putting it off, and putting it off, and putting it off, and you want to enter into the waters of baptism in the near future, you don't have to stand. As you leave today, there is a sign-up sheet in the back on the little stand. You have to at least give me your name. I won't make you feel uncomfortable in standing before all these people. It's okay. You'll stand before them right here. I want to make it as easy for you, friends. Make God, Christ, your priority. What is holding you back from being baptized? Knowing more about the Bible, we can study more about the Bible. Oh, I have problems at jobs with the Sabbath. We can take care of that. God can take care of that. Amen. Oh, it's just that my spouse, you know, God will take care of your spouse. God will convert the spouse, not you. God will do it. Friends, God, when he comes, will give us our priorities. Now, for those who are baptized and are members, whether in this church or another church, what priorities do you need to change in your home? I know that there are priorities in the Charles house that need to change. I know that my wife and I need to have a serious conversation that if we want to make it into the kingdom of heaven, we need to change some things. And I know that I'm not the only one. I know for sure. So church, I pray that we set our priorities, friends. So that when God comes, he says, let thy will be done, and he'll extend your hand. Come. Come in. Come in to what I have prepared for you. Friends, that is my desire. And if it's your desire to, to, to reevaluate your priorities, whether in your own personal life or family life, friends, I invite you to stand as I want to pray for you in setting your priorities that they may be God's priorities. And in, 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 in a little while, we're going to sing, I'd rather have Jesus. That is my desire for you. That your priority be, I'd rather have Jesus than anything else. Than anything else. Do you really mean it by standing church? Because I do pray for you.
And I do pray that every single person here standing make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, you're coming sooner than what we even imagine. We still think we have time to play with sin, it's time to play around, maybe retire and even spend some more time. Lord, we don't know. We do know that if our life is cut short, that was it. Our time is up. So I, whether our time is cut short or we live a long life, that you help us to put our priorities straight, to choose our priorities that they may be your priorities. We want to be like you. We want to be faithful to you. And we want to depend on you. And we saw those priorities in Genesis in the very beginning. God in heaven, bless every single person here standing. Please give them the strength and help them to remember as your word has promised that they can do all things through Christ who gives them the strength. Thank you, Lord, because you hear our prayers. Bless us as we continue on in this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.